Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't think so. Is there anything that I want to be delusional about? That <laughs> 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 I, I want to not break the delusion of. Yeah, right. yeah is there is there something that you would not want to know? Right. If if the box only contained disconfirming information, Truthisms. if it only contained disconfirming information, would would that have an effect on what question you ask it? Um, I'm going to end sound check, and we can ask that question again on camera if you want to warm us up. It's quite an interesting one, but I don't want to go too far because I feel like it could go far. All right, SE survey. An Englishman and a Texan fill out an SE form. Action. This is Libby Road and the Sound Epistemology Podcast. This episode of the podcast features myself and what might sound like the familiar voice from a previous podcast of my good friend Rupert Wilde answering the street epistemology survey put out by our fellow Northwesterner, Nate Ferguson. And although you may hear language from a typical SE conversation, it's important to remember that this is not intended to be a typical SE interview. It's two people who are familiar with the conversation tool, answering the survey and talking about our answers, which were revealed in real time throughout the series. The survey asks how much one agrees with a series of 24 statements regarding the nature of truth. Let's get into it. Do you want to go first? Sure. So, the first question. <clears throat> a statement is true when it corresponds to reality. So I agree. And, and I you strongly, strongly agree. agree. Okay. So I'm going to read the question again. Okay. A statement is true when it corresponds to reality. Yeah. I strongly agree with that. The reason why I strongly agree is that's basically my definition of true. Your definition of true is if a thing corresponds to reality. Right. That which comports with reality. Like that's my that's that's very close to the definition that I use for <clears throat> the word true. Right. Yeah, and for me I think there's um I leave room for reality to be um, veiled in some way so that we can't actually, it, uh, we could be wrong about what we're interpreting is reality. Mm -hmm. We talked about prior to this conversation that blue was a color that human beings couldn't see when they first started walking around and being human beings. We evolved to have the ability to see the color blue. We evolved to be able to see the, the color blue, to have that ability. So, that being the case, you know, there's a, there's a reality in place that not all humans had access to at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't strongly agree, because it could be that there's some sensory perceptions that we will develop that we don't have currently that'll give us a little bit more clearer picture of what reality is versus from where we're experiencing uh, through the sensory system that we have. Do you think that going back to that example of before humans had the ability to see blue, does that change the reality that blue exists? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Being able to see blue changes whether blue is real or not. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, but blue existed with or without our ability to see it. Right. And, and so, so I, I think that's what I'm lining up with true. True is it, it aligns or corresponds or comports with reality, mm -hmm. which we may not have access to because of our perceptions and our limitations. So if something is true, mm. it's true whether humans whether, know it or not, or can we experience can perceive it or not. Yeah. Or we can perceive it or not. It's yeah. beyond 
like I said, whether we can access it not, or not, that's a different question. Yeah. Uh, but my ability to be able to see blue has no effect on whether blue is real or not. Yeah, and so in that, from that perspective, you're answering strongly agree. Yeah. Yeah, and so... Yeah, so statement is true when it corresponds to reality. And... Yeah. I think I still only agree because I think, um, yeah, I think the definiteness of reality, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's a big thing is being able to measure accurately what's happening with reality versus what actually is reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I leave some room in there that I agree, but not strongly agree. Um, because for me, the nature of reality is, I think it's quite, uh, it's quite malleable. And so, um, I, for me, it's, it's not a matter of whether I can, I mean, part of it is, do I have the sensory perceptions to be able to accurately measure what reality is? Mm -hmm. But part of it for me is still that there's a there's an intangible piece about reality that um, you know like what's happening with quantum sciences, quantum physics, where a thing observed behave, behaves differently than a thing not observed, and so in that case, reality is writing itself based on how it's being observed or whether it's being observed or not. So I don't know that there's concrete reality for me, and it sounds like for you there is concrete reality. Um, and so I think we differ on that. Yeah, I'm convinced that there's a reality regardless of if we have access to it. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to say, and this is good that we maybe started with this one, because for me, strongly agree doesn't mean that I'm 100% confident oh. in it. Okay, okay. Strongly agree for me still has room to be able to be convinced otherwise. Mm. Like I agree with this. I strongly agree that uh, a statement is true when it corresponds to reality. Okay. I strongly agree with that, but that doesn't mean that I am not leaving room to be corrected about that. So if we were using a scale from one to seven, mm -hmm. you'd be at a six on this. Probably, yeah. And I would be at a five on this. So that what you're saying is that maybe this SE survey needs something firmer than strongly agree and uh, lesser than strongly disagree for those people that are seeing in absolutes. And you're saying that you're, you, you're modifying the scale that's in place to not be that strongly agree means absolution or absolute rather. right yeah I, and that's, that's a good why distinction because that, that's why i say agree and not strongly agree yeah because if that's how i was using the scale it might be strongly agree for you means a hundred percent yeah I, that that's okay. a pretty yeah if i strongly agree i'm at a seven and that's more like a hundred percent or a 99.9996 percent sort of thing mm -hmm. but i was using the scale in terms of, okay, if I'm saying I strongly agree, I better <coughs> mean it. That better be a seven out of seven. So that's how I was, because it was a, a, a degree of five scales. Strongly yeah. disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was what I was working within, assuming that the utmost was strongly agree and the lowermost was strongly disagree. And that's the limit? So like you're using strongly, mm -hmm. the word strongly, as it being the most extreme point on yeah. that scale as I possible. Am. I am, yeah. yeah. I see it more as like, yeah, six would be strongly agree. Yeah. Seven would be agree to the point where I'm close minded about it. Right, right, right. Five would be agree. Four would be. Neutral, neutral and then three. as we go down yeah yeah so for you it seems 
you're leaving room for the scale to have a, a one at the bottom and a seven at the top of it. And right now we're operating in the two through six. Yeah, I, I don't think currently that I have any uh, beliefs that are at 100 or zero or that are, are at one or that at is zero in your scale from is so you have zero one two three four five six seven or one two three four five six seven well i have one through five so your one through seven scale isn't what i'm going by based okay. on the survey just because what was on the survey was a one through five scale yeah so okay me, no that's right zero through yeah. four if you will okay so all right so if, if all we have to work with is one two three four five mm -hmm. three being neutral mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can see where strongly agree would look as if it's the most extreme. But I guess what I'm saying is I'm still leaving room. Strongly agree isn't necessarily, for me, n no more questions about it. Okay, and I was operating on the assumptions that strongly agree for me means there's no more discussion. Ah, uh, okay. I say no more discussion. There's always discussion. We're using two different scales. Yeah, we're using the same scale in two different ways. Yeah. yeah. And you have an extended version of the scale, and I have a more literal version of the scale, um, which is probably good feedback for, for Nate. <laughs> um, okay. Or maybe it's... I mean... Useless. But it's good for this discussion Yeah. so that we can understand that you know, when I say strongly agree, I am pretty... And when you say strongly agree... You're high up there, but you're not closed down to... So you, it sounds like you're going to use strongly agree more often than I, because for you there's still room for... Or disagree. Or strongly disagree. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I say agree, because there's room for, for nudge, for, mm -hmm. for working around. And strongly agree is where I'm more... Yeah, I'm pretty convinced that that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that takes care of the first one. <laughs> uh, are, yeah. Well, are we done with it? Was there uh, any other... I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I believe we are because, um, yeah, we defined what we mean by reality. We defined what we mean by perception of reality and whether that's uh, fair to include in our response. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm satisfied with it unless you have questions further um, that don't involve math. Right. And I guess, did I explain uh, if, uh, satisfactorily what my position on that was? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, I, well, maybe I can, uh, if I understood you correctly, for you, being able to perceive reality is different from necessarily what reality is. For you, there's an absolute in reality that may or may not be perceivable by us. That are accessible. Accessible by us. And so for you, a statement is true when it corresponds to reality. Is, is You strongly agree with because your assumption about reality is that there's a... There's a... a, a, a definiteness to it that um, an objective reality an objective reality whether yeah. we have access to it or not is there I suppose it begs the question then how the <coughs> fuck do we measure that because if we don't know if we reliably can tell um, and I'm not sure if that's something we want to go into or not I just I think I understand your view of what reality is to be able to base a statement true or false against versus mine. And you're not as confident as I am based on the fact that we don't, we can't be sure that there is a, an objective reality because of our limitations of uh, perceptions and biases and that kind of thing. Well, and to take it a step further, I think that reality, objective reality isn't necessarily objective. I think it could it could be written as um, 
and different things influence it. And for you, it seems there's a constant um, that whether or not, whether things are affecting it or not, it's still always going to be what it is. And I think for me that there is some room that we don't understand the nature of reality and we don't know if it's a fixed, like what it sounds like you think. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't know that it is fixed and written. I think it, it could be that there's some room for it to change. Yeah. Would you say that... Would you say that reality is independent of a mind? Does a, is a mind required for reality to exist? You mean a mind in the sense of like a consciousness that can observe yeah. the reality? I think it, it exists uh, independent of it. Okay. I think they are entangled with each other in a way we don't understand. But the consciousness and the mind, I think, come into existence come into reality and leave reality and so that there's always the base reality there that different things come into and come and there's always the base reality yeah I, I don't know that it's fixed but I think there is always a base reality okay so that's kind of how I I see it like there's always this base reality whether we have access to it or not yeah yeah, I think um, I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool.